Hello and welcome to our webinar, to this webinar on Project 19-1, the application of computer vision. Um, we will talk today about uh, new technologies and I welcome here our three speakers, uh, which is Craig McGill, who will start with a short presentation. Uh, Craig is a um, member of the executive committee of this term. We will then have a presentation from Bert van Duyn, who is uh, the chair of the ATC Advanced Technology Committee, and uh, followed by, last but not least, Wu Jing Wong from Canada, who is chair of the Purity Committee. I have a few house rules for you. Um, you are muted at um, the um, audience here. You cannot participate uh, orally in the, the presentation. I would kindly ask you if you have questions. There's a question and answer box where you can put your questions and um, they will appear on my screen and I will be able to ask these questions to all our panelists. Um, don't use the chat box. The chat box is um, not um, uh, prepared for that. Please use the question and answer box. Um, just um, another reminder, this session is recorded and it will be available on the SA YouTube channel in a few days time and you can look at it again at your own leisure. I would like to hand over now to our president, Kesha Mulu who I did not mention in the beginning, but he would like to give us some welcome notes. Uh, Kesha Mulu, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Andreas. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. On behalf of International Seed Testing Association, I welcome you to this webinar discussion on application of computer vision in seed testing for which reports on project funded through the ISTA special projects to assess available technologies for imaging and image analysis for other seed determination, purity and germination. Of course, ISTA has funded this work in recognition that an association and as a seed sector, we need to be looking at how these new technologies can be utilized for seed quality analysis to potentially speed up and accelerate the seed testing and help the seed analysts in their work to deliver the results of the seed testing in timely manner without any loss of accuracy and reproducibility. I would say with a greater accuracy and then reproducibility here. So this project is consistent with the aim of the 2022 to 2025 ISTA strategy approved at the ISTA Congress in Cairo in May of this year of strengthening the science and technology that underpins all the all that the ISTA does. As a part of this strategy, ISTA supports innovative research and linking of scientific development for application in seed sampling and testing. New technologies such as computer vision are possible within the ISTA rules, but these technologies must be fit the purpose for the both ISTA and then ISTA stakeholders, including seed industry. During this webinar, the speakers and then we will be we will discuss what is the computer vision in the context of seed testing and how ISTA can facilitate use of new technologies, what this means in terms of collaboration with ISTA from all stakeholders, and ultimately how we can turn measurement of seed parameters through computer vision into a seed test. I hope 
that this webinar will bring forward questions, comments, suggestions, and ideas from you, the audience that will enable technologies such as a computer vision to become a part of the methodology by which seed is tested com commercially. So therefore, I wish you good discussion and deliberations uh, during this uh, webinar. So thank you very much. So I now the hand over to Andreas. Over to Andreas. Thank you, Dr. Bulu, for your work of introduction. Um, we would like to start this webinar with the first presentation. And I would like to invite Craig to um, be the first presenter here. And we will all close our cameras and our mic during his presentation. Very, very good. Um, thank you, Keisha Vila, and, and thank you, Andreas. Um, and um, good morning or good evening, um, whatever the time may be in your, your part of the world. So um, what I would like to do is begin the webinar by talking a little bit about how with ISTA we facilitate new technology applications. So with ISTA there is a well-defined process for bringing both new methods and new species into the rules and broadly speaking new technology applications will fit into this process. A key thing with bringing new technologies and methods into the ISTA rules is that the Methods and technologies must be fit for purpose. That is, they must be validated. So how do we achieve that with an ISTA? That is through the ISTA method validation program. I won't go through the method validation program in any detail during this webinar, but for those of you who are um, wish to perhaps become involved in, in, in new methods and in new technologies into the ISTA rules, um, the method validation programs, detail of the program is available on the ISTA website. So this method validation program is used for bringing both new methods and modification of existing methods into the ISTA rules. So that's how we will facilitate new technologies. At the end of this seminar, I, oh, sorry, this, this, this webinar, I will um, talk a little bit about some of the nuances of that in terms of uh, whether in fact a method validation is required or not. Um, and of course, within the rules and the operation of the laboratories within their quality management system, equipment must also be fit for purpose. And we'll also pick that up a little bit at the end of this uh, presentation. So as I said, um, it is already possible to bring new technologies into the rules. There is a statement in the, the introductory chapter of the rules which says that rules proposals can include the use of new technologies new to the ISTA rules, whether these are the basis of new methods or new tools within existing methods, provided they meet two requirements. And that is, that as a result of using those new technologies, the results must be reliable and reproducible remembering that the, the ISTA rules are the methodology by which the results on the ISTA orange certificates and the rules are also out of the sampling for, for obtaining the samples for the testing um, for the, the two or ISTA certificates, the orange certificate and the blue certificate. ISTA is an organisation that has, that has member lower laboratories across the world and therefore the results must be reliable and reproducible across all ISTA laboratories and a key part of the validation method validation program which involves comparative testing is to ensure that new methods or new or new species if they're being introduced into the rules are the, the, the methods used are giving reliable and reproducible results across laboratories um, so how do we modify um, the rules? The rules modification is done in close connection with the ISTA technical committee that is responsible, or if there may in some instances be multiple committees that are responsible for that particular chapter of the rule that the method, or if it's a species proposal, falls into within the rules. So if 
um, an organization and, or, or a group are proposing a new method or species, the first step is to, to submit the information to the ISTA Technical Committee by the ISTA Secretariat, what the method is proposed, um, what some background to the method, um, and a proposed validation study. If the committee then agrees and sees that the proposal is robust, then a method validation study will be developed and instigated. At the conclusion of that method validation study, that is evaluated, and if the validation of the study is approved by the ISTA Technical Committee, it then moves on to be a rules proposal, an ISTA rules proposal. There is a, there's a process for rules proposals which will then be followed. Um, the last steps in that process are the rules proposals as approved by the ISTA committee, executive committee, to be sent for the, to the annual meeting or the ordinary general meeting which occurs within the annual meeting or Congress for approval by the uh, ISTA designated voting members. If that approval is received, it becomes a new ISTA rule. I think in terms of this webinar, the key aspect is the method validation study, which for, for, for technologies, new technologies, will happen in most instances, but not necessarily all, and we'll look at that in a minute. So just a few key messages from the method validation study. As I say, I, I'm not, not my intention to go into details of that. If you would like more details, have a look at the EFSTA website and or contact the it's the technical committee responsible for the, uh, the the area of the rules that you're interested in, or the ISTA secretariat. But the method validation process is coordinated by the ISTA secretariat, and the entire process is open and transparent. The validation reports are published on the ISTA website um, at, at the end of the validation, and they remain available on the ISTA website. If there are any issues in terms of the validation uh, uh, itself, then um, for example, the validation reports, the, well the validation method proposal and the validation reports are reviewed by both technical and statistical reviewers, again to make sure that the, the, the proposed validation is robust before it begins, and also the, re the validation report that comes out as a result of that validation is um, again reviewed by reviewers. If there are any disputes, um, the technical committee adjudicates. And um, copy, it's important to also note that copyright for any validated method published in the ISTA rules or in an ISTA method validation report is held by ISTA. So copyright remains with ISTA. The last case that I, I want to look at, and I think this is important in terms of this webinar for uh, computer vision, is that um, a key question in terms of comparing the technology and the seed analyst, remembering that um, the seed analyst is key in the laboratory for actually undertaking the test, and there is potential for some of the new technologies, for example, computer vision, to support or um, perhaps in some cases uh, replace the seed analyst. So a key question is, is the new technology equivalent to the seed technology? If the new technology is considered an equivalent, then for a method in the rules, validation may not be necessary. If essentially what you may be doing is replacing the seed analyst or supporting the seed analyst with this new technology. If you are considering proposing a new technology and you one of the first steps would be to check whether there is equivalence because that will then determine whether a, a method validation is required or not. And that should be checked with the relevant technical committee or technical committees for whom the, the technology you're applying, you're, you're proposing or you're interested in um, is, is, is relates to. So whatever chapter it relates to. So for example, if it's a technology that um, is going to relate to purity, you would discuss that with the purity committee. So while a valid method validation may not be necessary, the same requirements for the analyst are required of that technology. Okay, So that means that there must be verification of monitoring within the laboratory of the competence of the equipment to undertake the test, and that must be in place within the quality management system of the laboratory. So um, again, the equipment, in this case the technology, must be 
fit for purpose. So um, thank you. I hope that's given you a brief overview of, of how um, new technology applications can be brought into ISTA and um, hopefully it will set the scene for the, the, continue, the further um, presentations and, and the discussion later in the webinar. So thank you. Thank you, Craig, for this um, summary, which is important background information for everybody. I would like to continue with the next presentation directly, which is done by Bert van Doen. And uh, Bert, I will give you the uh, permission to start your screen and um, present to us the work of the ATC in this project. Uh, we cannot hear you. We can see your screen now. Speak to us, we can hear you. And the presentation, hopefully. And the presentation is in view now? Yes, everything is fine. Okay, good. Okay, so um, to give a little bit uh, of uh, background on what we're actually talking about when we talk about um, the current new technology applications and uh, also a little bit about the, the webinar uh, objectives. Uh, we, can, uh, we can first look at the, the aim of uh, new technologies and ultimately, of course, the aim of new technologies is to uh, have improved seeds. And we can improve seeds, of course, at many different levels and these mostly uh, are covered by the um, ISTA technical committee. So we talk about uh, germination, vigor, storability, purity, health, uh, homogeneity, but also, of course, for the, the, the seed companies and the uh, seed buyers, uh, the costs and, uh, and the yield. And these technologies that are used to improve seeds um, actually can be used for a two different uh, aims. So in seeds for breeding and in seed production. Um, so in production, of course, has everything to do with cultivation, but also processing uh, of seeds and the seed evaluation. I think in uh, ISTA, we mainly talk about seed evaluation, um, seed testing. So if we look at the current new technology applications um, that appear in, in seed science, I think the major ones we're talking about is molecular technologies, imaging technologies and mathematical technologies like modeling and artificial uh, intelligence. Um, these three are also connected in some way, um, especially imaging technologies and mathematical technologies are, are very much uh, going uh, together. In the project we're uh, talking about here, Project 19.1 is a special project. Um, we're dealing with imaging technology, so we will not talk too much about uh, molecular technologies in the discussion, I, I think um, we are focused on the imaging technologies. And when we talk about the imaging technologies, there's a lot around, um, not only because of different applications, but also because of 
different types of image uh, you can make based on the wavelengths or the, the technology. So we have visible light. That's, of course, what we all know. That's uh, also when we have an analyst looking at the seed, we're talking about visible light. Uh, X-ray, UV, infrared, um, there are measurements at specific wavelengths. Um, we have uh, NMR, uh, we have acoustics, so there are many ways to make an image. And um, all these different wavelengths uh, also can be applied in different ways. So we can have absorbance images, reflection images, fluorescence images, and, and many other types of images you can make using uh, light. So all these type of images may play a role at some point in uh, seed uh, testing. Uh, but currently only a few of, of the, all these options is in, in practical uh, use. When we look at the features that we can look at in seeds uh, in these imaging technologies, uh, we have to look at the external features and the internal features. And external are shape, color, size, the structure, the presence of specific compounds, uh, which may relate to all kinds of uh, seed uh, quality aspects. And the same for the internal features, embryo condition, endosperm condition, condition of the seed coat, also the presence of specific compounds inside the seed, the weight, uh, size, all these features can be uh, looked at with different imaging technologies. When we look now at the applications, I think what we see mainly is applications in uh, at the moment in seed purity and seed health analysis, where the uh, external features uh, play an important role. Um, so it also has to do with detection of pathogens, for instance. Um, we see applications in seed germination and vigor that mainly relates to the external features. So you can see if seed uh, starts to germinate, it changes the shape. You can see a root coming out. You can measure growth speeds and these type of features. But also internal features may play a role in, in germination and, and vigor. And we see uh, applications in treated seed uh, evaluation. Um, coatings of uh, seeds, uh, palleting of, of seeds, um, image analysis can play a role um, in defining the shape, the size, uh, distribution of chemicals on, on seeds, um, internal features, the, the thickness and homogeneity of coatings and pellets, um, condition of the embryo after treatments like, like priming. All these possibilities are, are present nowadays. And when we come to the objectives of the, of the webinar, uh, I think actually what we want to achieve is to define a guideline and take the actions to enable new technologies to enter the seed testing arena in an efficient, transparent and accessible way. So that means that it's clear and open to everybody that uh, the things that are happening to, to take new technologies into the seed testing uh, arena, uh, everybody can see what's going on. Uh, the, the reasons, um, the um, data that's available about these uh, uh, technologies and how they perform on, on seeds must be transparent to everybody in the seed testing uh, world. Um, it should also be accessible, so that means that if you need such a technology, um, there must be no um, blockades because of uh, specific um, situations with, with a certain uh, technology. So in principle, it should be possible for everybody to, to use these uh, technologies. And efficient mainly uh, deals with the process of getting a new technology into, um, into seed testing. Um, it should be organized in such a way that not a lot of time and, and efforts are, are lost because the technology is, is not suitable, not fitted for the, for the task um, that we know in, an, in a, 
early moment uh, weather technology uh, is, is uh, ready to, to be uh, used as, as a seed test. So all these um, things we, we need to discuss and we, we really need to uh, line up everybody in this area to, um, to make it uh, efficient, transparent and accessible. So that was my small contribution to uh, give you uh, some ideas about the, the topic we're, we're uh, discussing today. Thank you very much, Pat, for your short introduction and presentation. And um, without any delay, I would like to hand over to Wu Jing and um, ask her to continue from the side of the Purity Committee. Okay, um, thank you for everyone today um, to attend this webinar. Um, I acknowledge the uh, ESTA supporting this uh, special project to conduct uh, assessment for available new technology uh, for seed testing uh, in terms of um, other seed determination, purity analysis, and germination. Um, also, this special project was hosted by Canadian Food Inspection Agency. I also thank my organization to allow my team to work on this project. Also, thanks for a uh, team member from other technical committee, <clears throat> uh, like Bert, from um, Advanced Technology Committee. We also collaborated with uh, Germination Committee as well. Um, so I'm leading this project with the Purity Committee. Uh, so this project, the objective is um, to search available technologies in the marketplace. So something is available for people to use and also try to identify what is obstacles to apply uh, those uh, new technologies, uh, such as uh, AI or computer vision. And also try to make some uh, evidence-based uh, recommendations for speed up the application of those uh, computer vision uh, in seed testing. Um, so uh, I think Craig, and Bert gave a good overview about how you uh, propose a new method uh, in ISTA and also what is available new technology, uh, so-called new technology to uh, in seed testing or ISTA rules or in seed testing application. But I, I will focus on computer vision to make everybody have a, a good or same understanding about what is computer vision. <clears throat> so I would like to give a brief review here. <clears throat> so computer vision have a three portion. I always got some questions. People uh, ask me, uh, I got a machine. Um, I think the machine can do the work, um, but I am not. 100% sure. So I would go back to ask them, um, what do you have? So computer vision, the first one is imaging acquisition. So that means you have a hardware. So like a bird overview, the hardware can have different technologies, uh, visual lights, X-ray, uh, multi-spectrum, all those are imaging equipment. So when you purchase a equipment, that means you only have hardware. So the second part of the computer vision, you must have labeled data sets. Then, then based on the data sets, then the software can be developed. So this is a general component of computer vision and the potential application is, um, we think at the end, of the game, the computer vision, just like an analyst, a sample comes and you do a full analysis 
automatically. So that is a full automation. So that is one possibility. Another possibility is the computer may do partial automation. For example, you, you separated different component of purity analysis, then the computer vision can do partial other seed determination, for example. So that could be partial automation. The third one is um, the computer vision can assist analysts. Analysts do all the testing. However, they have something. They could consult a computer, for example. Um, they, they could identify most easy species and some species they never see before. So they can consult computer, say, whether you know which family is belong to, which species potentially it could be. So those kind of assistance could be a third application. Then with this project, uh, so we try to say, okay, we try to apply computer vision. What, what is um, the obstacles for end user? And what is the obstacles for even technology providers? <clears throat> so then in 2020 and 2021, we contacted two sets of uh, survey and we uh, have two groups. We developed two survey for two groups. One is for end user, so that is a seed testing laboratory. Another survey is to technology provider. So we try to <clears throat> understand from end user perspective, what is the challenges they, they are facing, what they need, and also we try to understand from the technology provider what obstacle they are facing and what potential uh, from the evidence uh, survey information provided, we can analyze uh, potential challenges and bridges as an organization or as a technology um, a process, we can speed up the application. Um, so the participant for the survey in two years, we had a seed, seed testing laboratory around the world, 52 laboratory participated, and uh, in that 67 of them are is accredited, and others are from non-credit or from other accreditation, like a ISO accreditation laboratory. And we have 16 participant as a technology provider participated in the survey, 56 of them are, they claimed, this is not verified, they claimed they can produce, manufacture imaging equipment and also can do software development. So uh, from the information, so this is just a highlight of the information to show current application uh, of computer vision in seed testing. So we ask what kind of imaging equipment you are using. So we can say 50% of them, this is end user from laboratory, they use RGB, so that means visual lights to do imaging analysis. And we, with 52 participant uh, laboratory, we don't have anybody use X-ray, and we have 19% of them use multi-spectrum uh, imaging equipment, no CT, and there have others. Others means visual lights with some infrared lights or visual light plus some laser, in, uh, some inflorescence, those kind of tech imaging technology. And application, you can see it's very low in current application in laboratory. Uh, 52 participants. If 10% means only five of them have been used in some capacity of seed testing. So this is just current status from the survey. So we knew the desire. People want to use computer vision, but in reality, it has a very little application in real production. Then we studied uh, what kind of a, uh, motivation for application of new technology. So here you can see we separated 
purity analysis is uh, blue. Uh, other seed determination is red, and germination is green. So we can see three types of testing, the motivation are different. So the first one is for purity analysis. The majority of people reply to say is because labor intensiveness and time consuming for analysis. So that is for purity. Next one is for other seed determination. You can see the motivation from the laboratory is because of lack of expertise to conduct seed testing and also uh, extensive personnel training for other seed determination. I think it's more aligned with what we thought. And for germination, the motivation is focused on lack of repeatability and not meet turnaround time to customers. So that means the germination have lots of demand from a customer and the turnaround time sometimes may not meet. And the interesting thing is lack of repeatability. They hope when we apply computer vision could make some um, uh, solution for that. And also we ask the laboratory, what kind of a performance you desired? So you can see here the score, we gave different score for the importance of the performance. The score five is orange colored. So here, something stand out. You can see fit for purpose is a number one and most important desire for application of new technology. So uh, something interesting to me is end user underestimated end user further te technical investment for the computer vision. So this part, the score is not very high, uh, but in reality, when the lab who really purchased the uh, equipment they would understand, uh, for example, our own experience when we have two types of uh, equipment to do image analysis, the continued investment is pretty high. So I think this one is underestimated, which also indicated the lab may not, the end user fully understand the technology, what was involved. And this is the information from technology provider. So we got 16 technology provider. Um, they get feedback to us. However, the information we received, um, we only have 56% of them to answer. To me, it's, this is an important question to be answered. So we ask, do you have sufficient understanding of the need of end user? Um, 33% of 56% of reply, uh, people who replied say they do not have sufficient understanding. And from the uh, end user, they say uh, they are, um, have, um, their first motivation application of this technology is fit for purpose. So this is kind of in, connection is we want from end user want the technology fit for purpose and from technology provider they say they don't actually have fully understand what's the need so here definitely from the um, survey information we can see we need a bridge between technology provider and end user and for this project, we also evaluated uh, potential technology. So we selected a machine, then it's used multi-spectrum. And we did an uh, initial test with three targeted species um, with a crop kind of wheat and barley. We did uh, other seed determination for sample from the wheat and barley to say whether the machine can detect um, chrysum arvensis and the other two species, they are similar to it. It's Canada thistle. 
uh, in common name. This is a targeted species, uh, which is regulated species. And we want to see whether the machine can see the difference between regulated species and the other two similar species. So you can see here the crop kind and the Canada thistle, the contamination have a huge difference in size. Um, so we did a pre-treatment of sample and then we gave machine only inert materials and the uh, contaminated weed seeds then the accuracy of this machine can achieve between 92 to 100 percent of detection and identification but here uh, i don't have the detail i don't have time to say the detail but it has a lot of work into it uh, from pre-treatment to uh, sample separation to uh, computer uh, data to uh, AI algorithm development. So that's what, from our experience, any user under analyze the investment of continued technology investment after hard hardware purchase. Then we also used another um, uh, example to test this technology is we have a similar sized crops mixed together and in general, it's quite uh, challenging for analysts to see the difference among this black Sika species. Uh, they are very similar in size, in texture, without training, even with, with training, sometimes to tell the species apart, uh, sometimes go to subspecies, it's quite challenging. And this is the advantage of new technology. You can see, they can separate these five species or types uh, with very high accuracy. So it's generally is over 96% of accuracy with our testing. Uh, with this survey information and with uh, uh, two types of equipment study, and uh, then we also, our research team did a literature search to say how the computer vision applied in agricultural application, for example, breeders uh, and uh, phenotyping of crops. Uh, they definitely have a big application and a real in production kind of application. So we did a survey um, literature review. Then it just on time last week, this literary Richer review was published on Sea Science and Technology Online. So in that paper, we also kind of uh, recommended a collaboration and uh, end user better understand about um, computer vision application, what was involved. It, the process, the first process in uh, blue colored here is application development stage. So in this stage, stage, you need equipment, you need data sets, like we said, you need verified um, uh, data sets to develop algorithm, then you have to verify that performance, then you can make application. So the second part is end user application, then you can take your images with something verified models, then you can do your processing of the images, then you can have data output with your desired application and accuracy need. So this is a whole process. You can see the key is a human here. So don't think sometimes misunderstand the computer vision could replace people. It's I to to me. It's never going to be so. Here, human is a big factor. Here, you have to verify the data sets. You have to generate the data sets. Then you have to verify its performance. And human also have to develop the algorithm and feedback from end user to continue to um, improve the software. So the whole process, human is a big part of it. Um, so this is application um, potentially 
could, could speed up the uh, application. The big obstacle here is data set. Um, so the data is come from end user. So to make it fit for purpose is data. So the data is a big part of it. So where also is a big part of it, the collaboration could come from. So uh, Bert mentioned something has to be transparent, efficient, and accessible. So if this data is held by um, not accessible, it's not affordable, not transparent, then the application wouldn't achieve that goal. So this is a project highlights the detail. If any of you interested about the review, you can go to the online publication. So now with this three presentation, um, you can uh, have your questions. Also, we would like to have some discussion about these questions. Um, from the experience or um, uh, the presentation, um, so what do you think would be the most suitable uh, test we can use computer vision? So basically where we start to use this computer vision, we still in a very beginning stage of application of computer vision in C testing. However, if we did right, the, um, the application could be speed up could be very quickly developed. So I probably stop here. Back to um, and Andrea, uh, how we could continue with this uh, discussion. So I probably stop sharing. Right? Okay, thank you very much. And I ask all the panelists on the screen again. Would you like to join Bert? Now, there are a few questions here in the box for, for you, but there are also some, some questions which were coming up during this, uh, this presentation at all. Um, Rujin, um, what would be the most suitable tasks using computer vision from your perspective? Um, so, uh... I think computer vision is based on uh, image analysis. So something can be imaged. Um, so to me, the, for other C determination, to identify seeds is analyst is based on morphology. Majority of current testing is based on morphology. So computer vision is almost like another, people use very uh, good uh, analogy is, uh, uh, like another set of eye, like a computerized eye, so similar to analyst. So I think when it's equivalent, it's very easy to apply. Um, another application is seedling classification. So it's almost the same as a seed identification. So another set of eye to classify seed. Where other application, for example, purity analysis, so purity analysis have a two part of it. One is classification. You have to separate different uh, inert uh, pure seeds from uh, non-pure seed and didn't meet pure seed definition, other seeds, all those kind of a component you have to separate. This part partially can be done by computer vision, um, but computer vision couldn't, could do artificial separation. But another part of purity is uh, you have to make the prop proportion, calculation, percentage of purity. So computer vision couldn't 
easily to calculate percentage. It's very difficult. You have to convert images to weight then to calculate. So that to me is a huge investment in development stage and but which can be easily achieved by analysts or other type of technology, for example, robotic separation or saves to separate. So to me, that may not the, the number one, the most suitable um, test to use computer vision. So that is just my perspective. I'm not sure other panelists do have other comments about it. So I think computer vision is most suitable for object classification. Well, maybe a question to you. Do we need a collaboration amongst the laboratories, developers and technology providers? And I would go a little bit further as well there. And that goes back to a question here as well. Um, could there be a centralized system to, to store these data? There are um, a few um, examples for programmers when they are open source software used and they have to rely to release their, their source codes to others. And um, is this a, a possibility? I think also Ru Jing made that comment a little bit. Um, your data set is, ex is, is expensive if you want to sell it, but if you're not providing it, your machine is senseless in a way. That um, uh, is another point here. Could you comment on that? Your mic is closed. Still? We cannot hear you. And we have the chat. Let me try if I can do something on my side. No, I'm unmuted. Yeah, so I was uh, muted by the uh, organizer. Um, I could not unmute myself, so that was uh, difficult to communicate uh, being muted. Um, so, but now it's solved. Um, so I, I got uh, Andreas' uh, remarks and, and the questions about. Um, uh, sharing uh, information, which uh, no doubt will speed up uh, application of different technologies. So, as uh, Ru Jing uh, also remarked, I th the, the, the availability of, for instance, reference material is, is a key to uh, application of this technology to a, a wider uh, uh, public. Um, and we all know the reference material is. is difficult to obtain, is, is um, uh, very different in different parts uh, of the world. There are so many uh, varieties uh, um, in use in different parts of the world that, that differ from each other. Um, so I think that ISTA can play a key role in, in providing a platform where all these reference materials um, can be stored and, and available. And uh, of course, for the reference material, the most important is, is that the information is reliable. 
and that is very well characterized. So if a um, reference material data set contains wrong naming or wrong identifications, um, yeah, then this will really cause a, a big trouble. So um, I think ISTA is the most excellent platform to ensure that such data sets contain information that's reliable. Um, and of course, it's a, it's a huge task and sometimes expensive um, to, to collect all this information. Um, but on the other hand, I think if see testing stations and technology providers want these technologies to become successful and to be implemented, yeah, we all have to invest in that. And um, yeah, sometimes you have to pay for this. Um, but it, I think it's the way to, to, to move forward in, in an efficient and transparent way is that there is some data sharing and that there is a reliable party that's taking care of this data and ensures that it's really what you uh, that what you get is 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 what you want. So this requires a lot of organization, um, but I think it's it's worth to do it. Um, and as ISTA, we really have to think very carefully uh, how we can take a leading role uh, in this. But I, I think it's it's. It's the way forward. So if, if we all want this to be a success and to be uh, viable, um, these type of uh, uh, actions uh, need to be done. And, and the same, of course, for data uh, from all tests being done with this equipment that can be very valuable also for other parties. So data sharing is, is very important. Thank you, Berg. Um, Craig, you are a member of the ISTA Executive Committee and you are here in the panel. Um, how can ISTA facilitate this, what Berg just uh, suggested? How can that be, be done and uh, can it be done by ISTA? Um, so, uh, in terms of um, data sharing, um, um, I guess anything is possible, but of course, um, we need to have the platforms available. Um, the ISTA website may be a, a, a possibility of enabling that. Each technical committee has its own area of the website, um, and that's, there's been considerable development of the website, so it may be able to be facilitated through that. But I, I think the key to that facilitation and, and, and any facilitation is through the, the technical committees supported by the Secretariat. I mean, with an ISTA, we are fortunate that we have a dedicated group of people within the Secretariat who are available to help um, not only members, but, but also to for people who want to engage with ISTA and want to become involved in ISTA, they are a good conduit. Um, and the technical committees, um, as, as I explained in my talk, they, they are the key to, to bringing these technologies into the rules and they should be a, a key way of facilitating those collaborations as well. Um, also, um, Coming up very soon is the ISTA Seed Symposium uh, that will be held in Athens from the 2nd to the 4th of November. And within that symposium, there is also a session on new technologies, which I think is also demonstrating the strong interest and commitment of ISTA for bringing in these new technologies and facilitating the use of these technologies wherever possible in the rules. So um, that will be another very good forum to start to exchange some of these ideas, some of these um, thoughts about how we do need to make this work in an open and transparent way and um, maybe into some of the details about um, how we could share data, how we could capture data, et cetera, to enable the progress in this area. Mm -hmm. Maybe the question goes also a little bit deeper. Maybe, Katja, what do you want to answer also um, uh, about it? Um, because it's the facilitating of the collaboration between labs, developers, and the technology providers, and uh, how to get um, these things like open sources um, running for the laboratories who need the data in the background. 
Now I have to see if I have to unmute you as well, Kashavulu. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So I agree with the, the you, Andreas, about the data sets uh, and then development of the data set. Uh, so in this connection, so probably I, I would like to ask the clarification uh, to Rajin. Uh, it was a good, good uh, the presentation and then good, uh, excellent work. So in this connection, if an X laboratory wanted to use this technology, so the X laboratory may receive a large number of genetic population or samples or species. So each, is each one of the need to be evaluated under a different environment or whether uh, each lab need to be developed a data sets for the maybe the for each species or the how it would be rosine yeah i think that is a Thanks. yes um i think that is a good question um i think uh, the first uh, I think today we cross a message. We need to share data. If we don't share data, the development will be very slow. So that is the first message. Second, to share data is a very complex task uh, because where the data come from? So it could come from developer and it could come from lab. So who is going to verify it? And also, uh, we presented each image technology will require different data set. For example, if you use multi-spectrum imaging, so that is a data set need to be shared. And uh, there have uh, visual lights, digital microscope images, that should be data set. Then there is x-ray, then there is uh, inflorescence. So, then we have to think about um, um, the collaboration. ISTA definitely can play a good role. I think ISTA's strength is technical committee, and they can verify the data. However, they also need other party to participate from. I, I really invite uh, technology providers and technology providers, including manufacturer, a developer and also data infrastructure where to host how to host how to make the data uh, easier to be host classified and being used accessible to the lab so where so the the question to crash willow is there should be a centralized data shared data to develop algorithm then each lab can access that algorithm and data, then they can use and generate their own subset of data, then they can feed back to the central as well. So those data infrastructure need to be set up. And also where the data coming from? It's usually come from the end user because the laboratory have the expertise. They can label them correctly. So then you have to have some kind of application. The lab submission of the data should be easier. So we have to think about a broader, the collaboration is that definitely can play a role. Then how is that can play a role to collaborate with a broader other parties from industry, testing industry and manufacturers, government and different um, Institute, how we can make that bigger collaboration to make this happen. So that is very complex. And so far, when we talked about with any computer science, and they say the data collaboration is most difficult part, then once we have data, anybody can develop their own algorithm or shared algorithm. So that is a secondary. So from the computer vision, the first part, what kind of imaging if we use very diverse imaging equipment that make data set will be you going to have a many different type of image sharing so that could be difficult initially for example even 
a visual light. I have a digital uh, microscope. And people say, how about we use for cell phone to make that application? The computer scientists tell me even cell phone images is different from digital camera or di digital microscope because the resolution, everything. So, um, so the data sharing is a big task. The collaboration is wider. Um, uh, it need a bigger collaboration. And I believe ISTA can play some organization role, for example. Definitely can play technical role. Who is verify those um, labeled data of this species? Did they report it correctly? This seedling, they classified as normal, abnormal, and the user submitted. Is the technical committee agree about it? If that is wrong, the result couldn't be accurate. So technical strength is ISTA strength. With technical committee, we definitely can play the role, verify the labeled data. So that is from my perspective. Thank you, Rojing. Uh, I agree with that. Um, and in, in setting up such databases and collecting a lot of information, there's a, a, a big danger that at some point you have to choose the format of the data you're going to collect. Um, technology may go so fast, uh, technology development, that uh, once you have your database uh, ready and you you put a lot of investment in in collecting all these um, these data um, that technology changed and a very different format is is asked so it, it you have to look very carefully uh, what you're going to collect and you should also be rather fast to to finalize such projects um, because otherwise uh, the technology development will, will be far ahead of you once you have it ready and then yeah, it's no use anymore and you can start all over again. So it's, it, it's a risky uh, operation and you need to act very fast um, and you have to make very wise uh, decisions and you, you really need to be uh, expert in what's going to happen in the future in, in this type of uh, of technologies so it's not something you can decide overnight uh, that you you will do that and and just start collecting pictures so that it's it's not like that so the, the, therefore it should be a maybe maybe it, it, it is a continuous process for the um developing the data and then and then maybe again we need to determine the how of we how often need to verify at each time for the data sets uh maybe yeah, the different you, 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 genetic populations yeah you need to you, you you need to try to make a universal data set in a universal format that can be changed in any other format that's required in the future. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to collaborate with technology providers and, and universities um, to do things like that. Or the government. Um... So I had another project uh, because I work for Canadian government. We have a computer uh, innovation branch. Um, so uh, the government is planning to host a application for um, this kind of initiative. So they are working on in a very early stage. So I, I don't have any product to, to share, but uh, um, so different government may have similar initiatives and ISTA may play the role to coordinate those collaborations um, uh, to have some way to share and uh, make that uh, accessible um, to whoever 
as a developer to share those information with uh, testing laboratories. Yeah, and I think you 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 have to start uh, in a modest way. So just choose one crop for one type of imaging and see um, if you can can manage that, and not try to do all crops for all different types of uh, of imaging. So be modest uh, when you start. Um, take a good example and and develop a, um, a way of working. And then this may be may be successful, and you're, you're not investing a lot of time and money um, on a lot of different things that in the end will will be very difficult. Yeah, uh, I, I did ask the survey uh, what kind of collaboration people would like. Uh, so if somebody allow me to share my screen, I could show the result. I try my best. So this is uh, from the. Sorry. Um... So one of the survey um, is asking people what kind of collaboration opportunity you would like to say. And this is a response. I feel it's almost an equal split. So 44% people say they would like, so this is from end user uh, laboratory. They say they would like to collaborate with seed testing industry. Um, so means collaboration among labs. So second one, 38% uh, would collaborate with organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations such as ISTA. So ISTA definitely on the horizon. Then the collaboration with end user or user group, for example, that is 19%. User group means if all the users use the same type of equipment, they could collaborate. So, yeah, so that is uh, the variation. So you can see from the survey, collaboration, um, somebody can play a role in seed testing industry ourselves and also uh, organizations such as ISTA. So I can stop sharing. Yeah, but that is giving us not the whole yeah, picture, it's only a kind yeah. of a preference. And it, in the end, you need to have all stakeholders on board. And that's what I see. And that's where we, where we probably need to go. Craig, you want to say something to that? Yes. So I think that's coming back to the original um, question. I think we all agree that we need collaboration, but we need but how do we facilitate that collaboration by bringing the various stakeholders together to have the discussions around ensuring that um, there is commonality across techniques, commonality across um, databases to ensure that that it is um, that th these technologies are universally applicable. I think that within the ISTA system, the ISTA, uh, the ISTA process, that's that's potentially achievable through through the because we have the accreditation process we have the quality management systems um etc and, and we and our and the 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 the, the vision of ISTA is uniformity in sea testing um so i i agree that ISTA is a very good vehicle for that but i think we still need to be reaching out and 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 working out how we can best engage with the other stakeholders uh, again ISTA engage as well with industry through, through it through industry bodies and we have good connections so that i think that would be a vehicle too so i i guess the question is coming to who's going to take the leadership in this area and and, and you always need leadership to, to drive these things forward 
So I don't know, Rojing, whether you have any comments on that in terms of we all agree we need to collaborate and we need to collaborate against, against multiple stakeholders. But what do you see as the best way of facilitating that, of achieving that? Um, I think we needed to have a technical discussion among technical committees and uh, to come out what is really needed. Then we can target uh, each area. Uh, for example, uh, shared data, we need, uh, in my, my understanding, you need uh, um, data infrastructure uh, where the, the simple task is to save the data. But uh, I think a big part is, uh, is the technical committee can play is how to facilitate people submit data. Um, so we need to engage, I, I believe, uh, the end user who has a, a type of imaging machine, they have their own data set already there. Can they share? If they can share, um, technical committee need, need to find a way to verify uh, their data. So that verification process is be simple. You cannot be um, submit uh, because it's all image data, uh, it's a huge data. So it must be web-based application, it must be a web, people can go there to, to see the web uh, data there uh, to verify the labeling is correct. And also for the people who submit data to reduce the workload, um, uh, we try to develop, like CFI try to develop some kind of uh, data submission application. So if you want to submit data, you need to, for example, seedling, you need to provide what crop name, uh, the correct scientific name, then you have to classify, tell this is normal, abnormal, and maybe give um, a few descriptions. And reviewer can review that information to say, yes, it's verified goal. And for other seed determination, you have to have an application when people submit data, they can use a web to submit. Um, so those kind of, uh, to me, is if we all agree, we need to, as a seed testing industry, we need to share data for this application. Then we need to work on the detail. And the technical committee can play that role, of course. Uh, the ISTA executives and all ISTA members can uh, also participate in the process and to say what is the best way to host data, to submit data, to verify data, then to store the data, to classify data, then the data set can be used. So that is my uh, thought to share. Did I unshare my screen? Yes, you did. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm looking at the yeah, I'm looking at the questions which came in. We cannot answer all the questions which came in. There are a lot of um, lot of um, things and a lot of um, uh, suggestions. But um, one point is: what are the easy ways within newer technologies? Routine bird, that's more going to you. What are where can we have newer technologies immediately? Is it purity? Is it um, uh, germination of the seeds? What is your view on that? Yeah, I I pro I don't know. Uh, sorry, I couldn't see the screen of other people. I, I think the, the most Easy way. Go okay, ahead. so the way to to create technologies is to to make it a kind of uh, intermediate between complete automation and um, doing things by hand. Um, so, in most instances, 
then all she determination is to do of um, the seed a uh, lot um, and just remove all the seeds that are are, uh, are not other seeds uh, and then by hand uh, uh, look over so you you reduce the load so that that's that's kind of uh, half automation so that these are the, the methods that are most easy uh, implemented because you you still do your identification of the other seeds with uh, with the seed analyst and you only do a pre-selection with with the machine so that i think that's the, the most easy uh, to implement at, at the moment so about germination yeah to really do germination uh, according ISTA rules, I think it's still very difficult to um, to detect the uh, normal abnormal seedlings. That's that's still a bit further away. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So so um yeah, I, I think from the perspective of of the the process in the laboratories, I, I would agree with, with Bert that the purity of the seed determination is probably the key area to focus on at the beginning. It's the gateway test to all the other tests, or most of the other tests in terms of the purity needs to be done first. And I also um, think that Bert's raised a very good point around how this technology can be most effectively used. And I, I would think also that if it was used as a, as a pre-sort technology, just to, so that to, the machines, I understand, need to be trained to, 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 to identify the seeds. If they're trained to develop a particular, identify the crop species, remove what we know is the crop species and reduce the volume of the seed that the analyst then needs to do um, in, in terms of, of, of the, the purity test, the number of seeds that are used in the purity and the other seed determination test. So, so, so I, I agree with Bert. I think we should be thinking of it at this stage as a, as a, as a, pre-sort technology rather than a, than a total replacement technology. Yeah, yes, I, uh, yeah, I also agree with uh, Bert and uh, Craig. Is, um, uh, so with this technology, with better understanding of this technology, it's need a huge investment of data before we can get the result. So we have to focus, identify. I think at this point, identify what is the first or most important priority. We think that it has a huge value and good term, uh, good result. Um, then we should focus on that rather than we invest our focus to so many areas. Um, it's not limiting people. I'm just thinking um, if we can focus on something, we could make one area application much faster. Um, that could be a way to speed up. Um, there is no way you can skip data to have algorithm and then it's produce accurate results. There have no simple way. That is a process you have to go through. To make it simple is to prioritize what is the most value we can, uh, like the survey people say, uh, this is this need, this is that need. To me, the repeatability for germination, seedling classification could be a, a good area to improve. However, the, the repeatability, we should ask ourselves among analysts, how much repeatability analysts can achieve. If that is a big obstacle, even for analysts to achieve repeatability, it's going to be hard for, for machine to achieve repeatability. So we have to think about how to solve that first to, to increase human repeatability, then we can think about machine. So that could be one way. The other way is, okay, we have to find a way to make machine is, um, collaborate with human to make a repeatability. But that is, uh, in general, should be a simple area to apply. Computer vision is a classification 
and application has been developed by different countries. And also the technology imaging equipment shouldn't be that hard because seedling classification only need um, general is a visual light. It's don't need a spectrum uh, or different, sometimes maybe infrared or something can see the disease lesion. But in general, the visual light uh, could classify seedling pretty well. So the equipment cost should be low. So that could be area people think about it should be that prioritized. The second area I'm thinking about other seed determination. Um, people asking specimens. It is hard for, for, the, for the country. They don't have sufficient reference to identify seeds they never see. But the trade is coming, the import and from very uh, different area come to your country. So even in human identification, you need a collaboration. Um, and this computer vision make that co collaboration easier because this collaboration, just virtual collaboration. If you submit your seed images, then the database can grow, the reference can grow. So it's very hard for human to achieve the um, collaboration in specimen share. It's quite easier to be shared by virtual reference. So this is a huge advantage of computer vision. So I think the collaboration, computer vision application is a big advantage of computer vision. Um, the human only can remember so much, so many species. You can remember 200, 300, then maybe up to your limits. And a computer can remember as many as you put there. So this is the advantage of computer vision. So with those kind of thinking, so I think the other seed determination and seedling classification could be a focus area for seed testing industry to be first, to be used for uh, this technology. And after that, with that, then the other type of application can be used, for example, the safer Thank you. situation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thing. We are coming to the end of um, our session today. I would kindly remind you on to think that it will be available on the ISTA YouTube channel later on. And um, also remind you on the ISTA Seed Symposium, which we put up here from 2nd to 4th of November. Craig mentioned that before. Um, there was one. There are a number of other questions, and there was one question also on um, workshops. I think there are ATC workshops available. The last one was pre-COVID in Brazil, as far as I remember. If you need or want to have an advanced technology workshop in your area, you can contact the Assistant Secretariat or BERT, and uh, we can try to organize if that is possible. And um, Finally, I would like to give Kesha Wulu the word uh, to um, round up this discussion as he is the president. With a question I still have here, is there a laboratory available in India which has this new vision technology available? Only if you know Kesha Wulu. Yeah, thanks, Andreas. Thank you very much uh, for, um, I would say that the first discussion, the webinar discussion on application of the computer vision in the seed testing, uh, we, we, we could, we could the, uh, um, uh, really the excellent presentation and then fantastic uh, suggestions and then data and then how, how the data needs to be developed and then, but, uh, and then how these data needs to be shared and then whether it is with the technological technology provider and then the stakeholders including the industry and the seed testing industry uh, need to be the, the share the data so thank you uh, all the speakers and then the to initiate the further action on this and then probably 
Uh, I hope that. So we'll we'll be we'll be just talking and then the sharing this information and working in this direction to uh, to to come up with a, a conclusion. I would say, or the maybe to start with a uh, immediate to start with a so with a one one aided uh, computer vision technology um, needs to be yeah. Um, then, then which needs to be implemented in 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 coming in in, in next uh, maybe in, in future. So so thank you very much, uh, Andreas, for the moderating. And then I also once again thank you uh, all the speakers, uh, Rojin, the Craig, uh, uh, and also the Bud for the excellent uh, uh, information. So you have given for this seminar, this webinar. Thanks, uh, Baranda. Uh, do you want to say something, there, Andreas? You please. Uh, I, uh, yeah, just, over to Andreas. I just wanted to also thank everybody who was uh, presenting here. And um, for the questions we did not answer, you may also contact Rojin, Bert, and Greg directly. Uh, their email addresses are on the ISTA website. You can. Uh, contact them and as always if you have questions on technical things or accreditation you can contact the um, technical committees or the ISTA secretariat to get answers to your questions. Thank you very much and again hope to see you in November 2 to 4 in Athens for the SEED symposium there. Thank you very much and goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye. We close now.